Hello makers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna have a look at the JG Maker Artist D. Now, JG Maker, formerly known as JG Aurora, um, we're about to launch this printer and they asked me for my review and I thought, yes, absolutely. Then I found out it was a Kickstarter campaign and I wanna give my thoughts about Kickstarter at the end of the video. But first, I wanna have a look at this printer and share my thoughts with you guys. The Artist D boasts a print volume of 300 by 300 by 350. It has dual independent direct extruders running on the linear rail X axis. It has dual lead screws on the Z axis and a removable flexible steel build plate with a Biltec like surface. It also comes with filament runout sensors. It has your standard graphics LCD, a full size SD card slot, and also a USB connection for tethered printing. Now, the most exciting thing I found was the quick swap nozzle system. The nozzle and heat brake are combined and are swappable through a simple push locking mechanism. You simply press a button and the hot end can be pulled out. Push it again and another one goes in. No need for tools, but I will do a deeper dive into detail of these particular nozzles at a later stage in this video. Installation was relatively simple. The printer comes in two major parts, the bed and the gantry, which attach together with four bolts. The frame is made up of 2040 extruded aluminum, so it's relatively strong. It comes with two purge buckets, which are very easy to install. Uh, they also have wire brush inside them in order to be cleaning the nozzle during tool changes. You attach the belt tensioner for the dual Z-axis lead screw, and then you attach a ton of ribbon cables to connect all the electronics of the gantry to the base. Now, ribbon cables wouldn't be my preferred choice nowadays, as I don't know what they are rated at and how they can handle all the heat. However, on the upside, the connection of the cables is secured with locking connectors. You attach the spool holders with the included filament sensors, and you just connect the rest of the cables together. Once all done, you just need to remove the uh, security sticker, which warns you what voltage the um, uh, power supply is set at, and then it's just a matter of plugging it in and switching it on. The printer runs on Marlin 2.0 and is equipped with a 32-bit mainboard and TMC2208 drivers. Now, while the drivers might run silently while printing, you won't really be able to tell as the fans on the printer tend to run really loud. There are five of them which are constantly on the go once you switch on the printer. And then two more for part cooling once printing. That would make it a total of seven fans. Setting up the printer for printing is relatively straightforward. However, it does have a caveat. Now, while the printer does not have auto bed leveling, not even assisted bed leveling for that matter, uh, it does have manual leveling only. And this is made slightly more complicated by the fact that for some reason, in the center of the build plate, there seems to be a locking mechanism in place. So it's like a screw which is attached right in the center of the build plate under the heat bed, and it just is a fixed height. Now, what this means is that while you have the four knobs to adjust the corners, everything depends on how precise the Z limit switch is installed. So the idea here is to first make sure that the center of the build plate is aligned with the nozzle and you have enough Z offset for the width of the paper, and you possibly might need to play around with the Z limit switch, you then can go ahead and adjust the four corners. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have as much time as I would have liked to to test this printer before the campaign launched, but I felt that it was important to get as much information out as possible so people can make an informed decision. Having said that, I did manage to run it for about 100 hours. I first started by running a quick dual color calibration test to make sure the nozzles are aligned correctly. Unfortunately, they were off quite a bit, but thankfully, the process to align them is relatively easy thanks to Marlin as it gives you the option to adjust the offset on screen. After printing, checking, adjusting, reprinting, checking, reprinting, repeating that for about 15 times, I got the offset just right. Now the hot end assembly themselves cannot be adjusted manually either to compensate for the difference in height between one tool and another. So the offset from one nozzle to the other can also be done via the menu. Once finished, it was time to print. Now bear in mind that the printer does have purge buckets, meaning that you can adjust it to have just a little purge before the tool switch. 
but since I didn't have enough time to calibrate the purge process, I opted to use a wipe tower in Idea Maker. The first print was a dual color headphone stand for a friend of mine. Now this was done in the PLA that came with the printer, orange and yellow. Unfortunately, the design of the stand isn't the most 3D printer friendly due to the rounded edges. The print came together quite nicely, especially considering that this was the very first print on this printer sliced with a brand new profile created in Idea Maker without any prior filament tuning. Once I was satisfied with the dual color PLA, I wanted to test out flex material because that's usually where uh, these extruders lack a bit. So I threw in a couple of spools of filament and flexful in my dehydro spool and printed the OG Bulbasaur by Flowalistic. The print was done at 40 millimeters a second with a retraction of about 2.2 millimeters. The idea was to test how reliable it is to print in flex. Now the result was actually quite surprising. While not the cleanest, it still printed out quite beautifully and it did it very well, especially since this was a dual flex print. Next was testing out PVA. Most people get IDEX printers purely for this reason, so it was important to test it out. I threw in some ZMARF PVA in my dehydrous bowl once again and printed two versions of the same model, the sphere and the cube. The sphere is slightly larger than the opening holes inside the cube and therefore has to be printed in sides with a ton of supports. PVA helps because it prints directly on the layer below the PLA so you don't have to leave that space gap and have like a less cleaner model when it comes to removing supports. The first version I printed was all supports printed in PVA but since PVA is expensive I also wanted to show it can be done using only the dense layer between the supports and the model with PVA and the rest of the supports with standard PLA. The models themselves printed out quite beautifully. The one with only dense support layers as PVA was very easy to clean up. It was a matter of just removing the supports with some flush cutters and then just simply cleaning up the PVA as it tends to uh, deteriorate a long time, uh, especially if it's in a humid environment. The one with full supports as PVA just required me to leave it in some uh, warm water for a couple of hours, rinsing and repeating, uh, and then some persuasion by, with a toothbrush in order just to clean the last few pieces. But in both cases, the end result is what you'd want out of PVA support printing. They printed very well and I'd consider that a success. Now the other great feature of having an IDEX printer is the ability to print in mirror or duplication mode. Stuff like this enables you to cut printing time in half when printing multiple models um, of the same kind. This can be done either in Idea Maker or else by simply going into the menu and changing the configuration to mirror or duplication. The printer will then rehome and recalibrate accordingly. I put some Prusament PEG for these tests and decided to print some clips. Now, seeing as I can't seem to have enough of these bag clips at home, it seemed only natural to print some more of them. Print process, once again, went very easy and printed just fine. For the duplication process, I was extremely cautious and moved the model to the side as much as possible as I didn't want the extruders to collide when they meet in the middle. But the process still worked either way. I did use some magic goo for the PEG as the adhesion with PEG on that Biltec type surface that it has is very strong. Something else I need to point out is that the PEG had been sitting out for quite a while so it was a little bit stringy and I didn't really dry it up before I started printing. All in all it printed everything I threw in it in the very short time that I had it and was very pleasantly surprised with the outcome and the machine itself. It, it still has a long way to go um, but I, I'd have to say that for the price that this will be sold for, I'm quite happy with it. However, there are a few things that I need to point out which are very, very important. The first is the hot swap nozzle. I love the idea and I hope more companies catch on to something like this and better it in the future, but I think it will need more work to be efficient. After I posted on Twitter a video of me doing the hot swap, the main concern was how efficient it is to transfer heat from the heat block into the nozzle itself. So to somewhat test it, I took the spare nozzle that came with the printer and I drilled a hole inside it, about 1.5 millimeter thick. Then I took a spare heat bed thermistor I had from my Prusa Mark II parts collection, attached it to the Mark II itself and ran the thermistor into the nozzle while installed. 
The idea here was to see if it did reach that temperature as stated on the screen and more importantly how quickly it does it. Before installing it I did test out the thermistor to see how long a delay there is between the temperature change and the actual reading on the Mark II and within a second of me putting my finger and thumb on the thermistor the temperature change registered. So I went ahead and I set the hot end temperature on the uh, Artis D200 and waited. Now while JG Maker quickly rose to 100 on the hot end and stay there, the heat inside the nozzle took a while to get there, but it did get to 100 eventually and it stayed there. Now the delay could be one of two things. The first is that the thermistor on the heat block is much closer to the heater cartridge and therefore registers the heat much quicker. And the second reason is that the tiny air gap that exists between the nozzle and the heat block also delays the thermal transfer because as we know uh, air is the best insulator. Another thing I noticed once I looked inside the hot end after drilling it is that the PTFE tube runs all the way through the heat break and inside the nozzle meaning that it's within the heat block and it just leaves about five millimeter to nozzle tip which is definitely not the most efficient way to have a hot end as it limits the temperature you should print at because you don't want any toxin fuse from the PTFE and it also doesn't make it the most efficient way to transfer heat. While printing, I did have a couple of screen crashes as well. Now this is just buggy firmware, so I am really hoping that JG Maker sort this out um, before they start shipping out these machines. Now finally, I wanna give my thoughts on Kickstarter. I'd be lying if I said it wouldn't make a difference to me whether I review a printer which is on Kickstarter or not. Um, the last Kickstarter printer I ever reviewed was the Kodama Obsidian, and we all know how that went, and it, it, you know, it still stings. So here is my disclaimer to you. Kickstarter is not a shopping site. You are not there to buy things. It's a crowdfunding page. What you are doing is pledging your money on a project of a company. So you are essentially backing a company. You're not giving them your money in exchange for a product. The idea is that you pledge money and you hope that the company succeeds in your project and then you hope that whatever you pledged for, you get a reward in return. Once the campaign is over and successful, because I'm quite sure that this will be successful, your money will be taken and given to the company in order to proceed with the venture of this project. You have no guarantees whatsoever whether that company will ever ship you anything no matter how well established that company is, that is the Kickstarter risk. And Kickstarter cannot do anything about it. There's absolutely no way they're going to guarantee that you will receive a reward if the project is successful. And it's happened, it's happened many times over, so it's very important to keep that in mind. To be completely honest, if I knew initially that this was going to be a Kickstarter uh, campaign, I wouldn't have reviewed this printer, but I only found out once it arrived here because it came over unannounced. And while it was here, uh, I decided I might as well do this video in order to give you guys my thoughts and also talk to you a bit about Kickstarter. Now, as I said, this printer was sent to me by JG Maker uh, at no cost, no money has exchanged hands. Uh, um, and the only thing I had to do was give you my honest opinion of what I think about this machine. So all thoughts expressed in this video are my own based on the machine that I received. I know a few more YouTubers that will be doing reviews of this printer and I know they've had issues mechanically. I don't know exactly what. I, what I can tell you from my end is that I almost had no issues whatsoever apart from the ones I mentioned. And to be completely honest, if if this wasn't Kickstarter printer and it was selling at the price that they're showing pledges on Kickstarter, man, this would be an awesome deal and I would have absolutely no problem recommending it. But that is it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Um, and you can leave insults if you want as well. I'm, I'm not judging. Uh, you will leave links to the Kickstarter campaign and JG Maker in the video description. Do not click on like, do not click on subscribe. Uh, do not ring the bell for notifications. I'm, I'm using, I'm using reverse psychology just in case you didn't notice. And as always, happy making guys.